In this video, we're going to learn about the groups of the periodic table. These are also known as chemical families, and these can be found as columns in the periodic table. The columns I've highlighted here are the alkali metals here in group 1, the alkaline earth metals in group 2. In the center, we have the transition metals. Over in green, we have the halogens. In yellow, the noble gases. And then here at the bottom, we have the lanthanides and actinides series. We're not going to talk too much about these guys down here. And we won't talk about these guys in the center. Now, the key thing to remember with groups or chemical families is that the elements within a same column are going to have similar chemical and physical properties. And so that means lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium are all going to have very similar chemical and physical properties. They're going to kind of look and act the same. Let's take a look at each one of these families and look at some of the examples of their properties. Let's start with the alkali metals. The alkali metals as you can see them listed here on the side, are very reactive. They're the most reactive elements. They have one valence electron, which makes them react similarly. They're going to be a very soft metal, and they have low melting points and boiling points. And usually they're going to be found uh, in compounds reacted with halogens, and those are the ones in green. Here's a picture of sodium, and all of the alkali metals are going to look very similar to this picture right here. Let's take a look at the alkaline earth metals. That's the column in blue right there. The alkaline earth metals are also going to be a solid at room temperature, and they're fairly reactive, but less reactive than the alkali metals. You can see them listed here, and they're going to be shiny, much harder than the alkali metals, a silvery white color, and they're going to have two valence electrons. And this is a picture of calcium. Most of the alkaline earth metals are going to look very similar to calcium. The next group in the periodic table are the transition metals, and this is this large group here in purple. The transition metals include so many elements that there's really a wide range of different properties here, but let's just look at a couple examples. The transition metals have a lot of different valence electrons since they move across the periodic table, and there's a lot of columns involved. There's a variety of uses and properties, and I've just kind of listed or shown a few examples of these transition metals. We could see gold. Uh, copper, and then we also have some platinum here. So we can see that they're very different. One thing that they do have in common is that the transition metals, for the most part, are going to be hard than solids, except for mercury. Mercury is the only liquid uh, metal. Transition metals are very conductive, and so they're used in electric wires a lot. Some of them are quite rare and considered precious metals, like gold and platinum, and so they're pretty expensive and turned into jewelry. Here's our next group, which is the halogen group here in green. The halogens are very reactive. They're actually the most reactive elements on the periodic table. And the element fluorine is the most reactive element of all the elements. They're generally going to react with alkali metals to form salts, but they will pretty much react with any other metal. They're gases, liquids, and solids. And here's an example of what chlorine looks like and this is bromine, and this is iodine over here. And so as you move from the top to the bottom on the halogens, things become more solid. Fluorine and chlorine are both gases. Bromine's a liquid. And as we move down, they turn into solids. The next group is the noble gases. And this is the group here in yellow. The noble gases are highly unreactive. They really won't react with anything. We start here with helium and work our way all the way down to radon. They have a full valence shell of eight electrons. Well, except for helium. Helium only has two electrons because it's in the very first period. This is an example of what neon looks like. Now, all of these are going to be gases at room temperature, and they're going to be colorless gases. But if we apply some electricity to any of the noble gases, we get them to shine, and this is a neon light. You can make lights uh, out of any of these elements by filling a glass tube, sealing it, and then applying elect uh, an electric current through the gas to make it light up. And that's a brief introduction to some of the groups on the periodic table.